It was late at night in a quiet lab at Argonne National Laboratory. Dr. Saw Waila, a physicist and professor at Ohio University, stood alongside his PhD student, Tololope Michael Ajayi. For over a decade, their team had been chasing a signal, a faint, elusive signature that would mark one of the greatest achievements in atomic physics. As the night wore on, they finally saw it, the spectral fingerprint of a single atom. They erupted with excitement. Dr. La's years of effort had paid off, and Tololope stayed in the lab all night, running tests to confirm their discovery. This was the culmination of years of dedication, frustration, and persistence. I could not sleep for probably two, three days. I didn't know how to tell you. It was uh, one of the best moments of my life because that was, I knew that we caught it. It's been nearly 130 years since Wilhelm Röntgen accidentally discovered X-rays. Back in 1895, Röntgen was experimenting with cathode rays when he noticed a mysterious glow. This serendipitous observation changed the course of science forever. X-rays soon became indispensable, peering inside the human body, revealing hidden structures in art, and even helping us explore the surface of distant planets. But the problem with X-rays is that the smallest amount one can sample is an atogram, a quintillionth of a gram. That sounds super small, and it is indeed minuscule. But at the same time, an atogram is about 10,000 atoms or more. Single atoms produce X-ray signals that are too weak to be recorded by conventional detectors. That's why traditionally, scientists use other methods to image the tiny things down to the atom levels. And they have been doing for a long time, actually. In the 1950s, a German physicist named Erwin Müller developed the field ion microscope, capturing the first images of single atoms. The resulting images, grainy and almost ghostly by today's standards, were breathtaking. For the first time in human history, the very building blocks of matter were laid bare. But it was only the beginning. In 1981, Gerd Binnig and Heinrich Rohrer from IBM Zurich introduced the world to the Scanning Tunneling Microscope, or STM. Unlike earlier technologies that relied on light, the STM felt its way across surfaces, like reading Braille, to create images of individual atoms. By running a sharp metal tip, just a few angstroms above the surface of a material, the microscope measured tiny quantum tunneling currents that varied depending on the distance between the tip and the atoms beneath it. These variations could then be translated into topographical maps at an atomic scale. This achievement earned them the Nobel Prize in 1986. The STM's success sparked a flurry of innovations, leading to the development of the Atomic Force Microscope, AFM, and other scanning probe technologies that could not only image atoms, but also manipulate them. In a now legendary experiment in 1989, IBM researchers used an STM to precisely move 35 xenon atoms on a nickel surface to spell out their company's name, IBM, on an atomic scale. Yet despite these breakthroughs, there was still a missing piece. STM could visualize and even move atoms, arranging them like pieces on a nanoscale chessboard. But one fundamental question remained unanswered. What were these atoms made of? STM can't tell gold from iron or oxygen from nitrogen. To truly understand the identity of atoms, scientists must use X-rays. Each element emits a unique set of spectral lines when bombarded with X-rays, acting like a fingerprint. But here's the catch. Detecting these fingerprints traditionally required a cluster of thousands of atoms. Until now. This is where this breakthrough comes in. Dr. La's team developed a technique that merges the best of two worlds, scanning, tunneling microscopy, and X-ray spectroscopy. They call it synchrotron, X-ray scanning, tunneling microscopy, or SXSTM. We take the spectra of the, uh, the material, and those spectra tell us, because they are the fingerprint, it's like a human. Fingerprint will tell who you are. 
each element in a periodic table has their own fingerprint for x-rays. And remember, periodic table includes all the elements that we found in the space for a whole universe. So we can tell all the material, hey, this is gold, this is silver, just by x-raying. But there is a one problem. We cannot x-ray one atom. It's mind-blowing. We have such a high technology now, we are so advanced, but we cannot tell one atom. If you give me one atom, hey Saul, here it is, one atom. Uh, I can image the atom with the scanning tunneling microscope. But if you ask me what atom it is, I will tell you, I don't know, just tell me what it is. I don't know. Why? Because we cannot x-ray. We cannot tell. We have to look at the spectra of that atom, fingerprint, and then we will tell you, hey, this is a gold, this is silver. So, finding the next breakthrough, that's the reason that I'm here, is because we made a major breakthrough taking the X-ray spectra of just one atom. And, and this is, a, in a way, it's a major achievement, not because of my own work, because we have never been able to get this point. This is a long-standing goal of scientists. We never been get to this point for 128 years since the discovery of X-ray. The SXSTM uses a sharp metal tip positioned just nanometers from the atom. When synchrotron X-rays hit the atom, they excite its core electrons, which then tunnel to the detector. This allows scientists to capture the atom's unique spectral fingerprint, pinpointing both its identity and chemical state. The researchers proved this method using iron and terbium atoms. Why is this important? The ability to detect and analyze the chemical state of a single atom could revolutionize several fields. Imagine pinpointing a single iron atom embedded within a protein or studying the behavior of rare earth metals like terbium, which are critical for electronics. By controlling atomic spins with X-rays, scientists could also push the boundaries of quantum computing. So if we can identify one atom, there are many scientific phenomena that start with the one atom. For example, the proteins, okay, or peptides, can be stick together if you put one atom in between. The atom will act like a glue to bring together to stick, but we don't know which atom it is, for example. Because in our human uh, body, we have many different types of atoms. We have iron, hemoglobin in the red blood cells. We have magnesium, we have calcium, zinc, copper. They are useful in many different ways. But some diseases, maybe, maybe, of course, we are not sure, are caused by this uh, protein misfolding or formation of the plaques, uh, the kind of, they clog the blood vessels and so that uh, it's part of the brain is dead. Those kind of things, if we can find that particular atom, then we will have a cure. Of course, I'm telling you right now is, it is, we still need to prove that uh, those things are happened by one atom. The problem is we cannot prove it because we cannot see, find that particular atom. If we have a technique to find it, that would be very useful. That's just a one little piece, I'm telling you. But there are so many different things because x-rays are so much is useful. Uh, uh, it may be able to use in quantum, for example, computation, we may be able to manipulate the spin with the X-ray. Because X-ray is not just to identify the type of atoms, we can also tell its chemical state. So if we want to use the catalysis, that's one atom cat catalyst, will be super powerful because you have a one atom, very small space, you are catalyst. But we can tell the chemical state before and after the reaction, then it will be extremely useful information for catalysis. There are so many possibilities. So environmental research for the catalysis, for the security, 
um, and for the quantum technology, there are so many things that can transform once you can do that. I am not saying that this will happen tomorrow. As usual, every discovery takes some time to get to the point of application. Um, there are some barriers exist, but we have already proved that, hey, you can take X-ray spectra of one atom. It's possible. This groundbreaking achievement didn't come easily. It required specialized equipment, including a synchrotron, a type of particle accelerator that generates powerful X-rays. These machines are only available at a handful of research centers worldwide. This is why Dr. La is now exploring ways to develop more compact X-ray sources as a turnkey solution so that other scientists worldwide can use this technology. It's an ambitious goal, but one that he believes is achievable. It took 12 years to get one atom signature to get, to get the result. At that day, was I and my, my PhD student, who was the first author of the, the article, we were measuring at night. It happened to be two of us, but the team involved so many people because we need everybody to contribute a very important part of this work. Okay? Um, and then uh, we saw the signature. That's an iron signature. To confirm it, you need to move detector right next to it. It should disappear. Then it's a one atom. So we move it, it disappear, put it back, it reappear. Then I knew that we got it. And then uh, in science, we need to reproduce the results. So we tried to repeat. And I told my students, hey, look, you work all night. Continue. He was very excited. I went back to home. Not because I was lazy, because I was so excited. In order for science, for us to grow further, we need to have the instrumentation, which is accessible by yeah, sure. many people, then uh, it will grow. So that is my goal for the next step. Mm -hmm. Because the synchrotron facilities, of course, are open to the, to the many higher institutions free of charge, but you have to apply the beam time, you have to wait, and, and all these things, it takes time. If this knowledge to be transmitted and useful for the humanity, more than basic science, then we need to develop further. Uh, this is one of my next goals, and I'm trying to, uh, to discuss with the possibility of different types of X-ray source to develop so that we can build up a turnkey instrument. It's just started it, so it's still way to go. But it's like other things before. It's normal thing that the breaking is one, development of apply something is the next. It's like when we discovered the computers, computers were like very big rooms. Now our cell phones and everything are computers. Uh, and, and, and it took some time, uh, and, but it, it gets to the point. So it's clearly uh, this will move to the next level because people already notice that this is an important step. We all need that. So I'm optimistic yeah. that uh, not that long, not that 50 years that you have to wait, it will appear really nice instruments that is becoming available uh, uh, for sure. That's, uh, I am, I'm optimistic that soon. How soon, I don't know, but it won't be that long. Now.